All right, well, my name is Glenda Cameron. Welcome to my How I Made $62,000 in 11 Months from Scratch with a $285 investment. It's not what you think it is. When you hear something like that on the internet, it usually means AdSense, internet marketing, or teaching people how to sell people information to teach people how to sell information. It's nothing like that. It's actually, when I was putting this together the other day, I was I really thought about it, and it's kind of fantastical when you think about it. When I came out of the storage auction business, you know, for those of you who don't know, I got sick, and while I was recovering, I decided to write a book. But what you do not know is the first book was supposed to be a relationship book. But more on that later. When I got started... I was all over the internet. I read so many things. It was like, you must blog, and you must do this, and you must do that. But I kind of pulled back from the brink of madness when I realized that the laws of business, online or offline, they're pretty much the same. You have to sell something, a product or service, and you must get paid. Marketing changes how things are delivered changes like take kindle kindle deliver how people would read books but it didn't change how people read books they have to pick up the kindle they have to look down and they have to read the words it's just the delivery system and the appliance is different but you still have to write it you still have to print, you know, do all of these things it, the internet makes things better but it doesn't completely replace certain things because i was honestly going crazy there was so much information out there and a great deal of it did not make sense to my business mind it was just like that where's your product where's your service what exactly how do you make money with this was the question that just kept coming up and i quickly ascertained that many people online were selling information to people who wanted to learn how to make money online but that was the business plan. I'm going to teach you how to teach other people to sell this information. So it was really challenging for me because I was used to having products to sell, either furniture, something up, a storage unit. That made much more sense to me than this new internet world. But I started to put some of the pieces together. I started to connect the dots. And what I learned was a growth mindset married to a commitment to win was the thing that was going to save the day because commitment is bar none the most important thing you would do when you're trying to make money, whether it's online, offline. You have to have a commitment to whatever thing that you are chasing. When I first started, I came across a guy. I liked what he was saying. I cannot remember his name, can't remember the blog. Just to show you, this was four years ago. This was more than four years ago. And the internet changes so much. But I started to formulate a plan. I had business credit mentor because I've put together three situations where I developed a lot of business credit. So I thought, hey, you know, people would be interested with that. But business credit is not easy to develop. And I was like, hey, I do a blog. Then... For those of you who listen to my YouTube videos, you know I like to date, I like women, I like women a lot. So I had this thing with Passionate Friday that was talking about relationships, dating, what I thought was wrong with relationships and dating. And then Urban Pack Rat, which was the storage auction thing. And the way that I have them listed is exactly what I thought in my head was how things were going to shake out. I came across this blog, can I remember the name, but it said start three blogs. Because the meth, the information that I received was, it made sense. It's like, start off with three things that you like or curious about or interested in and see which one oozes or rises to the top. And I really thought I was betting money was going to be business credit mentor. But it was like not business credit mentor because business credit is a very hard thing to let me back that up. Business credit 
in 2000, 2003, 2004 was not that hard to get. Today it's a little bit more challenging. A lot of rules have changed. But I thought it would be something that would have more appeal than it did. Then, you know, Passion of Friday, I learned that I could woo women with my words. I was very good with that, with the poetry, uh, love letters and stuff. So I thought, hey, you know, relationships are a hot topic. I even looked that up. And then, you know, the storage auction business, I didn't think because it was so almost taboo that people would really like it. They would love to hear the salacious aspects of it. But, you know, I, I really didn't think anything of it. So I put these three blogs together, and that is part of the $285. It started with, and this is how long ago, because I think my first year of hosting was like $185, almost 200 bucks, then domain names for 14, 15 bucks. And that was my total investment for the first really 16 months before I started reinvesting money from the business, which really wasn't a lot when I think, I mean, it, it wasn't, it was not a lot of money. So that's what got me started. And I was making some assumptions and taking some chances. Now, this is the thing that I will just start throw, just startle you with. After I got the blogs together, I noticed that my attention kept going back to Urban Pack Rat because this was when it's like blog every day, build all this content. I was writing every day and Business Credit Mentor would get a post. Pastor Friday would get a post. Urban Pack Rat would get like seven, eight posts. And the thing is, I knew that business. I, there were so many things that I could talk about that it was effortless to actually write content for that blog. So I wrote the blog and then I became a little depressed because really wasn't getting a lot of traffic. I'm talking 10 hits a day, 20 hits a day. Then I just said, huh, let me try YouTube. Went on YouTube and saw that no one was really talking about it. And I was almost going to do a channel. In fact, I actually did a channel for each thing. Pastor Friday had a channel. Business Credit Mentor had a channel. But once I started with the storage auction deal, because remember, I was getting 10, 20, maybe 30 hits a day on a really, really good day. I put up a YouTube video and put a link to my blog under the YouTube video. And I got 150 hits in one day. That was more than I was getting in a week. I'm talking about the seven day week. And I was like, oh, and I actually made a sale. I was like, whoa, there's you know money. And I was using, I started off with to check out because as many of you who know me, I despise PayPal. We'll never use them, ever. So I went through having my own merchant account, using Google Wallet. There's been a lot of reiterations. Well, I sell it with two checkout because they didn't care what you sold. A lot of the places, if you sell something kind of salacious, they'll shut you down and hold your money. So I got the sale, and I was just like, wow. And it, it was just... It was like, I don't know, when you're a kid and you find some money, it was kind of like that feeling. So we went along and I didn't put my book on Amazon. I had, I had, all right, let's, let's just be really, let me say that straight so you won't get confused. I used Create Space to print up my physical copy of the book. Then I didn't put the book on Kindle. And the traffic that was going to Amazon was actually coming once again from the YouTube channel. So essentially for 95% of that income came from urbanpackrat.com. And why I'm saying that and why that is important is because in 2013, it's like you have to be everywhere, you have to do everything. And I actually was sipping that Kool-Aid myself the summer of 2012, and I made a radical departure from my original business plan and lost money. And I've come back to this plan right here, what I'm showing you, of having my own asset and using YouTube. And the money started going back up again. It was crazy. And many people, because I put up an amazing amount, as someone puts up a, a crazy amount of content, that I was making all my money from YouTube. And YouTube 
may account for two to three percent of my income. And I, I will say it's good because, you know, it will, you know, and on a bad month, it's 400 bucks. On a great month, it's 1200 bucks. There's a wide variance between what you get, depending on what kind of ads they run, if the ads are planned. There's so many variables. So it's worth doing, and it also makes me money. Now, the thing is, I was not a YouTube partner, and the YouTube partner program has changed tremendously in the last few years. Only YouTube partners two years ago were, wow, yeah, only YouTube partners were allowed to monetize videos and they would send you if you had a video that was doing well and they'll send you an email and say hey this video is a is a, we'll give you an offer it's, that you can monetize this video and then you apply for partnering you usually got it when you got the invite that's how it was it was not as easy as it is now and I really wasn't making a lot of AdSense money in the beginning but with putting together this plan I didn't put my books on Kindle until the, almost the party was over. I mean, it was seriously, I trended my interest with the book, how things were doing in relations to the storage auction television shows. And I saw a spike, I saw a plateau, and I saw a decline. I started making plans to get out when I saw the decline. Going through all this, I became the accidental internet marketer. I was so green when I started this. I had, I had no plan B. I was just like, I was going to do this. I mean, winging it is an understatement. Totally winging it. I took my book to have it edited, and this is what I got. This is really bad. Um, pay me. $2,000 to rewrite this and edit it. And anytime that you have an ideal or something, just send it to me. I picked my face up and I took my manuscript back and I said, no, I'll just figure it out. That was the whole thing. You know, when many people look at this and I talk about things, there is this mm, presumption that it was easy. This was incredibly hard and nerve wracking because I was pulled 100% out of my comfort zone, which was storage auctions. I was ripped from a world that I knew very well and plunged into a world I had no clue. I was like that dude from The Walking Dead that woke up in the hospital and just started like, where the hell am I and why are all these dead bodies around? That's how I felt. It was just so I didn't have anyone to talk to about it because. In the beginning, many people thought I was nuts. It's like, you want to write a book? Really? You want to do YouTube videos? This is the crap that I got. And I'm telling you this because when you're working on your business or you're trying to do anything, you're going to hear some of the same stuff. And the thing is, I want you to remember this. If the person who's telling you that you can't do something hasn't really done shit in their life of note, that's not a person that you should take advice from. And that's how I had to start buffering and filtering the advice. Everyone that was telling me I was crazy were living lives of misery. They weren't happy. They had a job. They were the first ones on Facebook going, thank God it's Friday. Thank God. You know, that crap. And I was like, okay, the advice that you're giving me isn't really working that well for you. So I ignored it. But just to tell you, I screwed up royally. I made so many mistakes doing this. It was, it's kind of eerie, but the more mistakes that I made and learned from those mistakes, the faster the money came in. Because the product wasn't perfect the first edition. And the book was rewritten. And when I say rewritten, I added to it four times. The first book was 1995, maybe 100 pages. This was a constant journey of revision and adaptation. And I'm telling you that, that if you got an idea and you're going, oh, it has to be perfect. I have to have it dressed, dress right, dress. I'm telling you, no, you don't. People will pay money for stuff that they want. I got a lot of people pissed at me. Uh, there were folks who bought the book. 
Uh, one guy went on Amazon. He bought the book from me, but he went on Amazon and just ripped me. And I saw the review, and it was one of those moments where you want to pull the sheets just right under your nose and your eyes and just kind of peek out at the world. And I was messed up for a good month over that. I was like, really? And then people started chiming in. It's like, yeah, the book's not perfect, but I'm making money with the information. I, and I was like, I don't care. You know, I'm making money with the information. So people chimed in and this, even with all of those crazy bad reviews and understand if you write something, you get bad reviews. You're told that it's going to kill you. I found out that wasn't true because the book kept selling on Amazon, but most of it was coming from Urban Pack Rat because I was pointing the traffic to my blog. So I'm just telling you that you can mess up. Your product may not be 100 percent, not saying don't do your best, but you can still make a go of it with the product in beta mode. And I would talk to people and I'll meet people in public and it's like, are you an engineer? I was like, no, because it's like you're using the term beta. And I was like, yeah, because that's what this is. So know that getting started is the most important thing. Having that commitment to see it through the rough spots. Now, I was telling you earlier, <laughs> the first book was supposed to be a, a relationship book. I interviewed 300 women for this book. I had no clue the best way to meet the hottest chick in the place is to go up and say, hey, my name is Glendon Cameron, and I am writing this relationship book, and I would like to interview you if you have the time. Yeah, sure. Sit down. One lady pulled out her seat, and she talked to me for 30 minutes before I even knew her name. But she had so much to talk about. I was just like, if only I had known. And I put a lot of time into it. I had notes. I had phone interviews. I friended people. I put so much effort in this. Because understand, Conundrum Publishing came in to be July 17th, 2009. And I was launching these other projects, but most of my energy was on the relationship book. You know, I was operating on a very limited budget, as you will find out. Then I heard uh, certain things coming out. Hill Harper came out with a book. There were other books. Steve R. And I just started seeing the backlash that they were getting and the whole paradigm of being the relationship book dude. You have to go on the radio shows. And being a business person, I did my research. Do you know that the literature market is supported? The 75 female supported, 75% female supported which means most of the reading and most of the book sales are supported by women. And if you're going to write a relationship book, you have to write a book that will contain information that they will want to absorb. And my book wasn't going to be like that. <laughs> my book was, it was going to be a radical departure from Steve Harvey's book. You know, because I understand what is written in books and I understand what worked for me. I don't consider myself handsome. I consider myself of average looks. And at times, depending on the diet and how I'm working out, I am like a little chubby or a real chubby. And I learned you know, some methods and techniques that just may be very successful with women. And that was just going to be in the book. And I was just like, ah. And then another thing, I didn't really want to be the relationship dude going on talk shows or talking and you, you, you have to be the super respectful guy. That's not me. So it dawned on me. I was making something hard, very difficult. So then I decided to work on the storage auction book because it just made more sense. It was simple. I had way more information. I didn't have to interview anybody. I knew the business inside. Now I knew what newbies were going to encounter. I knew what media, media, middle of the road people were going to encounter. I knew what vets were going to encounter. And it just, the, the information was there, but I wasn't used to writing that much because I've been writing for 10 years, but I started off writing in longhand. Most of my early work was with a fountain pen on paper. 
It's totally different. I had to read, I had to train myself to create and write on the computer because I was used to writing in journals and notebooks and I wasn't used to writing a lot at a given time. So not only did I have to write the book, I had to train myself how to write the book. I received headaches. It was crazy. But the business side, and I will say starting the business and getting those lessons was the best thing that I ever did because I was able to objectively look at what I was doing. The relationship book would have been a bust. I know that. And I made that pivot. But also, I knew my book was a product. So I didn't really fall in love with it, which enabled me to weather a lot of the stuff that was coming. You know, I still got hurt when I got bad reviews, but it wasn't enough to knock me off the horse. And I really hustled. I did whatever it took to sell my product. And then I discovered something with YouTube. I started putting up the crazy ass stories of the stuff I got out of the storage units, the games that we used to play on people, and just some units that I bought. And I still have stories I've never talked about on YouTube or anywhere. I started telling stories and my sales went up because just having the videos on YouTube, I was getting like one sale a day on a $19 product, which was good, but you know, it's hundred bucks a week. That wasn't enough to put some chatter on my Whopper. It wasn't. I mean, so I was like, okay. Then I had a day where I just, I was going out of town, but I wanted some videos up. And this was before you could schedule a video for YouTube. You had to upload, sit there, wait, and do all this stuff. So I put up five storage auction story videos in one day. Went out of town, came back. I had 500 bucks in my account. So I was like, story sell books. There are people on YouTube is like, Glenn is a great story there. He's just a storyteller. He's not a reseller. What they fail to understand is George Lucas is a storyteller. Steven Spielberg is a storyteller. So, you know, storytellers actually make a lot of money. I didn't know that. I, I had no clue. But stories are very powerful in selling a product extremely powerful so i started loading up that's why that first year it was like 200 videos because it was like okay what about this unit i was literally driving by storage facilities to jog my memory it's like okay i got this and that oh yeah i got that unit oh i mean it was that type of exercise i'm up at two o'clock in the morning driving around i'm like oh i'm on savoy drive because i got savoy is a very special place for me because i got five jackpot units from that location so, and it was a store, and it, it went to, it was under ownership of two different companies. It was owned by SureGuard, and SureGuard was bought by public storage. So I would just sit there, and all the memories come. It was weird, because it was like, okay, so I just got to drive by. Or I'll go in and talk to someone I knew, one of the managers, and it was really effective for helping me jog my memory to, to do these stories, because they made a tremendous difference in my sales, a tremendous difference. Now, I really kind of talked about a lot of this in the other slide because, you know, I was putting this together. But one real important thing about this, and it's really the way that a lot of companies are growing. I started advertising my book the first week I started writing it. I started putting it out on YouTube the first week because old school marketing took a while to catch on. New school marketing is viral, Facebook, Twitter, and understand Facebook was still, Facebook was not what it is today. Twitter, and even to a degree, YouTube. So I was operating in some old school marketing techniques still work very well. So I just kept putting out information because I noticed a lot in my email box. It's like, yeah, I've been watching you for three months. And that seemed to be the magic number. It's like, oh, three months. And I was consistently putting up information. And they're on the three month mark. They would buy. So with that kind of intel, I knew that I had to just cons just consistently put stuff up and really, really hammer it out. When I was going through that, I was a scared little bitch, scared little rabbit in the basement. 
making YouTube videos, thinking no one's going to watch this shit. I mean, seriously, that's what I was like. Okay, then I had to slap myself. It's like, you can't say stuff like that. You People are going to watch your shit. So I just said, fuck it. Win or lose, I'm going to push on, and I just put my stuff out. And every time that I hit the submit button to YouTube, it was an exercise in pure anxiety. Because you didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. Because the good thing was there was no one talking about storage auctions to a large degree on YouTube. The bad thing was no one was talking about storage auctions to a large degree on YouTube. So I really didn't know which way this was going to go. And my goals were pretty modest. I had, you know, what people call the come to Jesus talk. It's like, all right, God, if I can make $50,000 a year, and I'll let you in a little secret. When I started this, I wasn't poor. When we shut down the business and liquidated, I had a nice nut that I was sitting on. I wasn't even close to poor. But I know how I operate. I pretended I had no money. I put myself on a budget. And at 1500 bucks a month, I only allowed myself to go out once a week because the commitment was to getting that book done. That was, it was kind of crazy because people were like, that's all, you're not hanging out? No, I got to work on this book. And some days working on that book, I really didn't hit my objective because uh, some days I'd be there five, six hours and it'd be 50 words on the page. And a lot of that was fear. But, you know, I discussed what I learned from the one innocuous blog comment. Actually, I did not. Hold on a second. The uh, the blog comment, hence the title of this, I need 2,000 sales. Remember when I was talking about early on, I was doing all of this research. I can't remember the blog, but I remember this guy made a comment and it made so much sense to me. Instead of trying to get all of these views and trying to get all of this traffic to your blog, Create a nineteen to twenty-five dollar product. Every thousand sales is nineteen thousand. Two thousand sales is thirty-eight. And you know, with relatively modest sales in terms of internet numbers, you can make a living. So it was like Eureka. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. And I started working on that. And what's really interesting was getting that first sale was the hardest. It's like once I got that, it was kind of like the pressure was off. Then two days went by and I got another sale and it started being like one sale a week. And what I didn't know was it was the natural progression of what I was doing. But within three months, I was making about 750 a week, which was huge because that was double my original budget. What I was living on, living on my savings. I was living on 1500 so all of a sudden, it's like I had more money, and I was so used to not spending money or going out, money kind of stacked up. It was a beautiful thing. It, it, was a, it was a beautiful thing. So I also gave myself just two years to make it happen, or I would have to get a job. Because due to health concerns and things, I didn't think I was ever going to get back to the storage auction business. I don't think I ever admitted that to myself until like now. But I always knew that I was never going back. And this was before the TV shows and all this stuff. It's just the way that I went at it, it would be difficult for me to change and hire someone and manage someone because I enjoyed it so much. And also, you can't serve two masters. That was something else I learned a long time ago. So, you know, I got the money. It was coming in. And I was like, oh, and I started doing more and more. So I could go out now, I could hang out. But in the beginning, my goals were 200 to 500 words a day, and the book must be done in 90 days. I actually got the book done in 86 days. I came in four days before my deadline and actually sold my first book on the deadline date. But it was crazy. I would like literally lock myself in the basement. I wouldn't leave until I got my... 200 to 500 words. Now, to give myself a little flex time, you know, the two to 500 words a day, Monday through Friday. If I didn't hit my weekly goal, I worked weekends and I worked a lot of weekends. And that's how I got how I got it done. But you have to break it down into certain levels. And that's what I did because I didn't know. And I was reading books about writing. I was writing. It was crazy. My brain was ready to explode. And 
I was like a crackhead when I would go out that once a week because I had this bar that I would go to. It was Vino Libro, and it was still a lot of cool people. And I'd sit there and nurse my drink and suck on the ice and everything. It was so sad. But I, I got stimulating conversation, and I got to say, oh, yeah, I'm working on a book, which just opened up all types of conversation. And when you deny yourself, when you do give yourself permission to do something like that, it's just so much sweeter. So I was working on this project that was life changing, but I was also working on me because delayed gratification is one of the benchmarks to becoming wealthy or successful. Many people try to chase the dream and live the dream concurrently. You cannot chase the dream and live the dream at the same time. It's just very damning. It's very hard. Maybe a one out of a million can do it, but most can't. So this is how I went down. I was uh, doing really well. And around the 14th month, Storage Wars aired. My income quadrupled. <laughs> I mean, it was like, and understand, I was coming from that spot of where I denied myself for a long time. Because do the math. It took me, I was working on, you know, the relationship book. Then I did a pivot. And I started this July 17th. And the book didn't come out to October. So then three months after that is when I got to a little boy income. So it was like around Christmas time. So almost half a year, I was living like a monk or a pauper. And I didn't have to, but sometimes when you don't have organic hunger, you have to create artificial hunger. And that's what I did for myself. I just denied myself and just made it, worked it out. Now, the second year, I made $92,000 on the book sales and other income consulting. Then... Just before it petered out, which would have been May of 2012, that's when it really flatlined. I mean, I still sell books to the day, but give you perspective and context. I used to sell in a week more books than I've sold all year long in its September to give you an idea of how many books I was selling. Yes, more books in a week than I've sold all year long. I don't even really look at those numbers because, you know, uh, the books on Amazon and I've got it part of a package deal. But if you notice, I'm also not really promoting storage auction books anymore. I'll talk about it. I'll help people out. I'll consult. But once again, I made another pivot. So this is the thing. Many people lock themselves into situations or positions based on their own desires, not so much out of necessity or requirement. And I will say the book, like I said, was one of the best things I ever did because over the last four years, I've made over $400,000 from writing that book. And a lot of it came in 2011, 2012, a bunch of it rolled up there. And I've been able to sustain myself and I haven't had to touch my savings and I've been able to live a middle class or maybe an upper middle class lifestyle just based on this from a business that I knew nothing about, which would be you. Because that's one of the things I get. This is like, how fast can I get to five thousand dollars, Glendon? How? I didn't know about this. I had no clue. But I'm going to tell you what did it for me. Number one. Set, I set a goal. Number two, I took action immediately. I sat down July 17th, rolled up the goals. July 17th, I started taking steps. Number three, when it was really funky, I didn't quit. I got all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, for those of you who were relatively new, I had people making channels with Glendon007 using and harassing people. And I mean, it was just bananas. Every time I turned around, it was something new. I got screwed out of about $80,000 
And to the point that my entertainment attorney gave me my money back because I was getting ready to sue because I'm like, you didn't protect me in that deal. I got screwed at $80,000. So you can cough up $80,000. You can give me my money back. You know, pick one. So he gave me my money back uh, with the television show. All kinds of crazy stuff. And once again, I was a fish out of water. I did not know any of this stuff. I was dating someone and she was at my place and I was working on stuff and I had the computers up and I was doing all this stuff and emails were coming in and she was just like, how did you learn how to do all this? I taught myself. She couldn't believe it. She thought I was lying. This is what happens when you take it upon yourself to take ownership of your goals and to take ownership of your life because you know this is one of the reasons that i'm so ardent about you know the degree myth because i know there's been a lot of people with degrees or even mbas who didn't make four hundred thousand dollars over the last four years there's a lot of people that make half of that in the last four years some didn't make a third of that so what i'm saying to you is in this webinar is if you want to do something that you never did before and people are going you can't do it or you you you're chasing something you're scared i'm here to tell you you never know what's going to happen until you really try and i will be honest with you because that's one of the hallmarks i never said in the, in the um, my storage auction material books it was an easy business it's one of the hardest businesses physically emotionally that i've ever been in it is just it gets you on so many levels but even with that i was successful with that and i've learned how to make myself successful in other businesses and you know you know just a few steps you got to be lean as you possibly can i'm talking about it in videos and people think i'm crazy if you're in a good financial situation right now and you want to start a business you might need to move home with mom and dad, but not because you can't support yourself, but it gives you the ability to reinvest more money in your business. It's huge. Just things like that, doing what it takes. Like, you know, I had I had 300 grand in the bank. So I knew that I wasn't ever going to be on the street or anything like that. But $300,000 does not last a long time when you have no income coming in. And I knew this and my partner knew this, you know, she had money and she used a lot of her money on her cancer treatments and stuff. But I learned to be hungry when I didn't have to be, if that makes any sense to you. When you can make yourself be hungry, when you can be very comfortable, you can be sitting back doing nothing and enjoying life, which is what so many people want to do. But then... At some point, you're going to have to produce. And if you're used to living fat, happy, and cozy, and you don't know what hardship is, or you cannot, you know, like a, I'll tell you right now, I don't have normal cable. I have bare back, I guess, skinny cat cable. I mean, I don't have any premium channel. I have the, I, I just have enough to have the television on because. I don't watch television and that's another thing you know in your life eliminate shit you don't need just because you can do it doesn't mean you have to do it every month i go through my stuff and i was like hey do i need this do i need that and if i need it i keep it if i don't i get rid of it because from the storage auction business i learned that having a bunch of stuff that you do not need can cripple you financially emotionally and physically it totally can so in your quest to build your business or do these things that are perhaps outlandish or over the top understand you have more power as a person than you think you do you have way more power as a person and a lot of times we let the echoes of other people's failure or the lack of faith stop us because I had a lot of people say, hey, don't do this. It's going to be crazy. And look at the results. Now, I put the end there because that's the end of that journey with the storage auction book. 
I'll still make some money for a few more years. Not a lot. You know, pay a bill here or there. That's what it's down to. But it opened up the doors for something else because I know that in this business that I'm in now, because the name of the company went from Conundrum Publishing to Conundrum Media. And that was another thing, because when I was going through all this stuff, it was like, I had, it was really, I was doing so many things, it was very hard to define what I'm doing. Now I've really defined it, and I'm really, really pushing it down to, hey, this is what Glendon Cameron is doing. He's teaching people how to make a living without a job. Because as you just heard in this webinar, I didn't have a job, but I turned it into a livable income. $62,000, you're not getting rich. But you also are not poor. And you also can afford decent housing. You can also afford a decent car. And if you're like super thrifty, you can actually support a family on that income. So I did that for myself. So that's what I can teach you because this is one of the things. When you want to evaluate me or you want to evaluate anyone, it's like, hey, is this a person that I need to listen to? See what they can do for themselves because, you know, self-love is the greatest love of all. And if you can't make money for yourself, how can you teach someone else to do it? That's one of the things that cracks me up. I see it all the time. It's like, hey, you know, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And you look at the person's background and they're doing YouTube videos and they got ratty ass blinds or they're riding their roach crawling by and you're just like, this person hasn't made their own environment successful, but they want to go out and make someone else's environment successful. That doesn't add up. Just saying, it doesn't add up. Okay, so what I'm going to do, pop out of there and let's see. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. And there's one already there. Uh, this question is from Tom. What are the requirements to publish a book on Kindle, etc.? Do they need to be reviewed or a certain length of quality? Actually, that's a killer question. In the, I'll give you the history of Kindle real quick. In the beginning, there were no requirements. If you uploaded 10 sheets of paper with one word on the side, it would get on. You could put it on Kindle. Over the years, they've put a used to be able to do what were called PLR books, private label rights, where you buy this information and you can resell it legally. Um, they did that. They got away. You can't. Some people. Kindle, in many regards, is still kind of like the wild, wild west. Some things you can get away with, but definitely now your book needs to be 5,000 to 7,000 words, which is a short story. And no, it doesn't need to be reviewed. This is what happens. You, you write your book, you get it edited, and there's either two software. There's a software called, there's two, it's called Calibri and Signal. Signy, Sig, S S-I-G-I-L. And you need these software, this software to format your Word document or page document into the language that Kindle will be able to use, which is Mobi, M-O-B-I. Everyone else does their ebooks and EPUB, but Amazon, hey, we're going to do Mobi. So you have to convert it to that file. Then once it's converted, you upload it to the Kindle publishing platform there's no cost whatsoever and at that point the book will be reviewed by kindle it used to take three to four days you put your book up at six in the morning it could be selling by 12 uh, so definitely much 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 feather and quality let's talk about quality quality I'm going to tell you what saved me. Uh, I'll give you the stories because this is actually going to, because I see one about editing. I'll answer that one, but this will touch on that. I paid someone 1500 bucks to edit my first book and got totally screwed. Just because someone says they're an editor, don't believe them. So I actually ended up getting three people to read the book and they caught most of the errors. And then the version that's up, Making Money A to Z to 2011, I actually 
hired a grad student who did it, did a great job, and it was only 500 bucks. <laughs> so I had this so-called professional screw me. And for a third of the cost, I got a great product with no complaints. I had one person that tried to run that on me, but at that time, I got that query. I sold like 5,000 copies and nobody said anything. So out of 5,000 copies, somebody would have said, hey, you know, this is really jacked up. So I knew they were full of crap. But with the, um, you know, the editing, there's, you know, I, I'll give you my process now because it's involved. I'll read it out loud, which will catch a lot of stuff. But remember, I am dyslexic. <laughs> so <laughs> it goes only so far, but I've gotten really much better then I will have someone else go over it and look at it. And then I will have it edited by another company because um, that's what will nail you on Kindle now because it wasn't so bad before. And I'll tell you, as a lifelong reader, every book that I've read has had an error. But that's part of what I call uh, self-publishing snobbery. <laughs> It is kind of funny what goes on with that stuff, but there's a lot of yeah, it's just snobbery because this is what I found out. If the information works and people get a result, they're they're cool. They're really cool. There are some people, if it has a mistake, they are not ever going to uh give you another chance. And there's other people who really don't care. From all of my jacked up books, you know, I'll take full credit for what I did. I've had people who've bought everything that I've written, everything from day one up to now. So that should tell you that even if things aren't perfect, if your intent, which is something else that I will uh, talk about in another webinar, is super important for you in terms of making a go. Let's see. So hopefully that answered that. Let's see. Uh, you said editing cost two thousand. Is there a way to reduce that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I kind of answered that. Yeah, I mean, there's a. I don't know if I can find actually. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let me go here. I'm gonna see if I can show you this. And this is what I'm talking about, just becoming a, a um, research junkie. Throw away writer. I believe that's it. Let's see. Yep. This guy helped me out tremendously because I write erotic and I have some other stuff. And, you know, this is the guy's name. Throw away writer. If you're a writer... Go to Reddit because it's a lot. Just read the whole thing. And he he gives you his whole process on how he did it. And he was putting out like several books and he got up to a thousand dollars a day in Kindle sales. I've never gotten up to a thousand. I've done maybe 500 bucks in a day, but that was some special because I promoted it. But he um, he breaks it down. This is probably some of the best information that you can get about Kindle it still works to this day. That is, if you write and you can write a lot, you know, it makes a, uh, a huge, huge, huge difference. But go to Reddit and look for Throwaway Writer. Read that whole thing. It's a lot. It's 200 comments. Well, that's three. Read everything. Just go through it. You know, take a few days, go over it, and you will come away with a lot of awesome information. Uh, this question is from the last question about editing costs was from Joseph. And this one is from Tom again. How can I judge if my topic is desirable? Most of my expertise interests seem to be of a limited audience, unfortunately. Okay, you just answered your question. You already know. This is how I found out. Well, I mean, erotic is one of, is number one. It's in the number one topic in the world. Romance writing. Those are those are number one book sales ever. Romance writers. A lot of them make millions do this go to google whatever topic you're interested in put the keywords in and just see how many people are talking about it 
Now, I will tell you that some niche topics are also great because uh, I thought the storage auction thing was going to be a niche topic. And before Storage Wars, it really was, which is why I pushed to grow the price of my book because I knew it wasn't going to be selling a lot. So I thought so. My goal was to move that price point up to 50 bucks, which I did. And. You know, to answer your question more succinctly. Go to Google and just do the research. If a bunch of if there's a bunch of articles about your topic, or there's a bunch of YouTube videos about your topics, or there's a bunch of Facebook groups about your topic, it's a hot topic. And some of them will surprise you because you might think your topic's not that hot, but until you start digging, you really don't know. Create Space is a company owned, and this is from Joseph, is owned by Amazon. And it allows you to do what's called POD publishing, print on demand publishing. Essentially, you can have physical copies of books that will be printed up once they're sold. So you don't have to carry inventory. I never carried inventory. I remember funny one of my trolls on Facebook the first year was like, yeah, Glenn just got to sell these books to get rid of his inventory. And I laughed because I didn't have any inventory. I kept maybe 20 books at a time. For you know, because I was mailing them out to people because I was selling the ebook and the print copy, and I just laughed. I didn't have any inventory. It was the funniest thing. But yeah, Create Space is owned by Amazon. Um, you can print up your books and essentially upload what's called a PDF file, and they'll convert that into a print book whenever someone orders it. And it was pretty nifty. Are there any more questions? And just to let you know, I'm going going forward, there, there's going to be a ton of webinars on various topics this month. And one of those webinars will be Kindle. I will pretty much, I'll just walk you through the whole process because Kindle, Amazon's weird. They don't like for people showing their secret sauce, so to speak, uh, how to upload books and all this other stuff. So, but this is another thing you could create. Yeah, let's see. I will do this Kindle webinar and what I will do is create a new Kindle account you can have up to three I believe and I'll just walk people through the process because it seems to be more daunting than it is and in the beginning it was but it's very very simple now it's surprisingly simple a lot of people don't know you can actually upload a word document to Kindle and it will turn it into a book it won't give you the best experience as a reader because the you know just to break it down Kindle is you're reading hypertext you're reading hyper markup text is and so it has to format your word document or your pages document to a language that internet it, it essentially your Kindle book is a web page and your your phone or whatever it is is just putting it in the browser. When you were and this is from Joseph, when you were writing, did you have a topic every day or did you write whatever came out came to your mind? Um, I actually sat down and created an outline before I started writing anything. So I was going in sections. It was a very methodological plan. I knew what was going to be in chapter one. <laughs> it was going. I did the table of contents first in a rough outline. So I never was like writing in the blind, so to speak. Any more questions? I'll wait a second. And understand this will be recorded and you know what I said before like you know entry is a buck if you want the recorded version because what I put up today it was like 750 for the people who attended the webinar and for folks who didn't it was like 15 bucks so this will be put up and made available on Gumroad once I get it done convert it turn it to a video uh, you'll get an email Let's see. That was six questions. Okay, here's another one. All right. Good job. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. 
And for just like I said, for those of you who want the Kindle webinar, I'm actually going to do one of those. I will put that out because uh, there will probably be a total of 10 to 15 webinars this month. So I'm not really sure. I'm still the calendar is going to come out tomorrow. I'll email everybody and let them know what's coming up. So. All right. Looks like that's OK. Cool. And Joseph says, thanks. All right. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I want to say thanks for everybody that came out. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the good side.